Hi everyone, um, today I'd like to introduce you to Dylan Stillpepper. He's the admissions coordinator at Alder Care Zanesville. Hi Dylan. Thanks Mike. And um, you know, one of the things we'd first uh, like to start out with is where are you located? So we're over on the far end of Zanesville, 4200 Harrington Drive, just down the road off of North Point. Okay. And what's the best phone number if someone wants to get in contact with you? So we are facility number 740-452-4351. And then my work cell phone number is 740-328-7476. And anyone can call or text me on my cell phone. So. Okay. And uh, what about an email address? Yeah, email is my name. So it's Dylan, D-Y-L-A-N, dot still hyphen pepper at altercareonline.net. Okay. And then if they do want to look online um, for Alder Care, I, I, they can obviously Google Alder Care Zanesville. That'll come up pretty fast. Yep. But I think it's just zanesville.aldercareonline.com. Yep. And so. then also our Facebook has all of our updated information as well. Okay. So if you just Google Alder Care Zanesville on Facebook, all of our updated pictures and information is on there as well. Okay. Great. So um, when someone calls in, uh, it, you would typically be the main contact, mm -hmm. right? Yep. I get a lot of phone calls a day, so if I'm on the phone, other people will all have the same standard questions and everything, but I'm the main contact, and I uh, get a lot of phone calls also, just generic questions from people just sure. wanting to know this or that for mom and dad, you know, okay. not dealing with it before. So that's common, and that's a good way to just use your resources around, too. Sure, sure. Now, um, can you describe the layout of Alder Care Zanesville, what the amenities are, that sort of mm -hmm. thing? So we're a 99-bed facility. We have three units. Um, two of those are going to be dedicated to long term, and then here, real briefly, we're going to be ramping up and starting back off with our dedicated skilled unit, which will be very nice. Our rooms are what are called butterfly suites. Um, so it is a semi private room where two people share a room, but you actually have an entire wall that separates you and your roommate, and you just share an entryway and a bathroom. But the rest of your room and everything is to yourself. Uh, there's a closet, a couple drawers, have a dresser, bed, chair, everything like that in there. We do have um, 12 full-blown private rooms that are reserved for our hospice patients, those whose clinical conditions require it and so forth like that. Okay, okay. And so, you know, so really the, the types of care that you guys offered, um, short-term rehab care, skilled nursing care, and the hospice care yeah. as well. Yep, we, we do all of those. Our skilled census is usually pretty good. And, you know, have a good bit of long term and then we have both HOCO and Genesis Hospice that we use for our hospice providers. Okay, all right. Now, when someone is interested in, in visiting, um, what should they expect? I assume you offer tours. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I always try to set tours up just so that way I can make sure I have the time mapped out for people. I usually try to spend about a half hour because there's questions that people like to ask and then there's questions that we need to get a sense of kind of if this is going to be an appropriate fit for the individual that sure. they're looking for on a clinical need on you know all sorts of different things sure. so i like to have time to actually be able to sit down talk with them face to face and then to show them around mm -hmm. and then introduce them to therapy or anybody else that might want to talk with them while they're there too because then it gets them some more information as well when they come in and you mentioned therapy what what types of therapy programs are available so we have we do all three occupations pt ot and speech therapy mm -hmm. um, we are also very unique or we have our own therapy company it's called absolute therapy mm -hmm. and we do a therapy seven days a week which is very nice it allots for um, some skip days during the week that um, some places are working on moving towards the same but it just is very nice for the residents as well what type of, of other programs or activities do you have available there so we have a very busy activity schedule. Um, our activity coordinator does a fabulous job. We do music several times a week. Um, we do several outings every month. We do a couple shopping trips and then we try to plan one big outing for people as well. Okay. Um, we're gonna go to a pumpkin patch this month, right. for example, and then like this summer we went to the zoo. Different things like that. Um, we always try to come up with new activities as well, so we're always taking you know, recommendations and things from the residents. We have, you know, Bible study that meets. We have mm -hmm. people who do activities and crafts. We have the men's group, got card club, just different things like that. And if I remember correctly, you have the amputee group out yes, there as well. Yes, so we do. Yes, thank you. We have the amputee support group that meets out there. Um, that they, they had kind of gotten in touch with Tracy, who's our head mm -hmm. of our therapy department, and they meet out there every month and. 
Um, you know, they do a really good job. We actually don't have much to do with it now. We kind of just provide the space and sure. the food, and they kind of run it all themselves now, which is kind of <laughs> fun to watch them. That's good. Well, so, you know, after they've, you know, someone's got in contact with you, they've gone on a tour to understand a little bit more about things, um, and they've decided to, to go there, um, you know, I assume they're going to have to sign a, an agreement, mm-hmm. and you'll talk to them about pricing, whatever type of care yep. they might need. And uh, I know with, with every place, there's a, a great deal of paperwork that does need to be signed. They can take that home with them if they would like and yep. review it then. Yep, I always offer copies after I go through paperwork with families. Most of the time I prefer to have families sign it so that way it's one less thing that the resident has to worry about themselves. Sure. Plus sometimes that's just an ordeal to have them sit and go through all those pages as sure. well. Sure. And then it helps too because then the families can make sure they're understanding everything as well. And I have it nicely laid out where it dictates who's going to be signing on the member's behalf. So that way it doesn't make any one person liable for somebody. Okay. Makes sense. Makes sense. So after they've done all that, um, what should they expect on move-in day? So uh, move-in day is is not too crazy. I always tell people it's probably the most overwhelming day for the person coming in, but that's to be expected. Sure. So we'll bring them in. Um, we'll kind of show them the room. And the nursing staff kind of does most of the stuff on the initial day. So they're going to do a head-to-toe assessment to make sure that they know what the member looks like. So that way, if anything new pops up, we know that it's actually new. They're going to get all the vitals, get all the weights. They're going to go over the medication list with the family to make sure that we're not missing anything or to make sure that we have the right dosage, what they're used to, Mm -hmm. just to make sure that that's all translated well. We're going to go over and make sure appointments are set up. We're going to get your shower preference, things like that. Make sure we get you settled in your room, get you comfortable. If we need to help you get stuff put away, you can. Most of the time your family do all the organization sure, yeah. stuff, but just different things like that. And then after that, we just kind of try to let them settle in. If they're going to come in as a skilled patient, if they come in early enough in the day, therapy will do their evaluation the first day. If not, therapy will evaluate them the next day. Okay. So I always let everyone know that's kind of to be expected from your therapist. So if anyone kind of comes in before about 2 o'clock, 1 to 2 o'clock, they'll get evaluated that day. Anything after that's going to be most the likely day. the next day. Okay. And when you're meeting with, with folks, they'll, they'll get a, a packet that looks something like this. Yep. Yep, so um, I give them a packet with a lot of information for the company, the facility, and everything like that. Okay. Also, everything's available on the website as well. Okay. So, so you know, there are a lot of different places to, to choose from. Um, what, in your mind, sets Alder Care of Zanesville apart? Well, I think our therapy is the big one. Um, we have a wonderful, wonderful therapy team. It's a very long-standing crew. We don't have a lot to come in and out due to... We usually do have a pretty high skilled census. We do pull from a lot of our other sister facilities around, you know, Cambridge and Newark and things like that. Sure. But we still have the main set of therapists who are set for our facility, which I think that is a big help because then there's that continuation of care. The mm-hmm. residents know who's going to be seeing them day after day, week after week. And the other nice thing, too, we actually have our own home health company. And if people live within a certain area of either the facility or where the therapists themselves live, our therapists that they see in the facility can do their home health therapy as well. Okay. They go with our home health. Okay. So it's just kind of one of those things that they, our company has strived to put into place to kind of help move past just the facility. So that way sure. they have that sim- similarity. So that way there's not as much fear or unknown moving forward into that home health phase. Okay. So. Okay. Well, and, and one of the unknowns a lot of folks have is how to how to pay for, for care. And I understand uh, at Alder Care Zanesville, I mean, you know, folks are privately paying uh, some insurance coverage, uh, Medicaid, Medicare, um, veterans benefits, mm-hmm. um, and not the, the contract with the Veterans Health Administration, sure. but they can use the pension benefit right. there as well. Yeah, and uh, people can always feel free to reach out to me. You know, insurance contracts change year to year, so... Um, that always changes throughout the year as well because sure. it's not just the first year, first of the year. But uh, I keep an updated list of who we accept in and out of network with. And um, one thing I always remind people too, if anyone has Medicaid as a backup and they have a primary insurance as well, mm-hmm. even if they go to an out of network facility, that Medicaid will pay their co-pays for that. So because okay. yeah. I ran into that where people don't go somewhere out of network because they don't want to pay the co-pays, but then they've had Medicaid. I'm that's like, well, they'll cover it. So. Yeah, 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 that's good. 
Well, so I think that does give folks a, a really good idea of what to expect when they would get in contact with you and, and visit. So um, if you do have further questions, please be sure to reach out to Dylan. I'd be happy to talk to you about that. So Dylan, once again, thanks for coming here today. Appreciate and, it. And I appreciate the information. And um, thanks again, everyone. We'll talk to you soon.